previously on legacy videos so that having been said uh, my grandfather was the first automobile mechanic uh, that was hired in Pelham Georgia by the Pelham department store to work on what cars there were in that community at that point in time well a guy that sold glasses came through there and he offered my grandfather a job riding with him and just keeping his car up. Well, he gave him room and board and supposed to be paying him. Well, my grandfather got in the car with him and left my grandmother in Pelham with my father, who was a newborn baby, in Pelham, Georgia. Well, they get to a town in, in Alabama by the name of Geneva. Now we've gone full circle. Well, <clears throat> there he was, stranded. Uh, he didn't have any money. The, the local constabulary let him make a phone call back to Pelham. They didn't have a phone at home, so he had to tell somebody at the Pelham department store what had happened, and they had to go tell Leela, my grandmother, what had gone on and um, so she wouldn't be worried about Doc. Well... While Doc is there trying to finish getting this car worked on so the folks that are repossessing the car and everything can drive it back, they, they did pay him some money to do that, by the way. Dr. Beasley saw some of this going on. And Dr. Beasley walked up to my dad and said, you been doing this long? He said, well, I ain't been doing it long, but I started doing it at Pelham Department Store over in Georgia. Got hired by this guy, but I know cars. He said, come over here and see if you can fix mine. So he went over to Dr. Beasley's house and got Dr. Beasley's car running. Next thing he knows, he's got a job driving Dr. Beasley and taking care of his car. Well, one thing led to another, and my grandfather was keeping up cars around Geneva. Now, keep, keep in mind now, wasn't a whole lot there at that point in time, but there were some trucks and uh, tractors of the day and he worked on all of those well he borrowed enough money to us it would seem like a minuscule amount but it was about three or four hundred dollars and he opened up a filling station in downtown geneva with a garage in it called andrew motor company and uh, there's a picture of my father as a little boy standing out in front of that thing. But that's where it all started. And from there, my grandfather, a man with a, a sixth grade education, became the owner of a motor company, two franchises, uh, uh, a Chrysler, Plymouth, DeSoto, and General Motors, and a Standard Oil distributorship franchise uh, there in Geneva, Alabama, and that's where he set up housekeeping. My father was born in 1913 in Pelham, Georgia. He was a year old when they got to Geneva. Uh, my father died, uh, not in Geneva, but in Pensacola, but he's buried in Geneva. Uh, my grandfather and my father only lived to be 69 years old. Uh, and both died about two years before their 70th birthday. Well, my brother and I always said, when we'd call each other up on the phone, we'd say, hey, you had your open heart surgery yet? Stuff like that, you know, teasing around about it. And we said, well, one of us got to get past 70 years old. We got to beat this 69-year-old record. 
So my brother was the first one to do it. Uh, I was second, of course, and I'm glad to be here. My brother died a couple of years ago. Um, and um, uh, I don't have him to talk about my open heart surgery. Uh, but I had open heart surgery in, uh, in 2015 after a heart attack. But anyway, back to Geneva. Geneva's a great little burg. I mean, it was small. When I was growing up there, there was a little over 3,000 people there. They had a huge chenille, chenille mill there and a, and a shirt factory that was owned by Van Heusen. Folks worked there. Uh, had a cotton mill. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I can hear that cotton mill whistle today. I can, I can almost duplicate it. You know, that thing would go off about 4.30 in the morning, and it'd sound kind of like this, go, Ooh, and it was way off in the distance to me, but really it wasn't probably, but about a mile away. Uh, but they'd sound that whistle tell everybody the time to get up because they had to be at, on, on shift change. Um, uh, just sweet memories like that. Uh, Geneva had, had, had a, a, a telephone service. And it was run by one lady. And there's been more than one time I'd come home from school and I'd pick up the telephone and I'd say, Miss Holland, uh, let me have two six. And um, she'd say, well, Joe, your mama is in a meeting. And she told me if you tried to call to tell you that there was some food left from lunch and that you can snack on that, it's on the stove. And I said, well, how about sending me over to Daddy? He said, well, your daddy's not here. He's gone to Samson. He called your mom and said he'd be, might, he'd be home for supper, but he would not go back by the office. So she was a, a billboard for us. It was almost like a, uh, anytime we wanted to know something, you could call Miss Holland. Miss Holland, where's Daddy? You know, it was pretty, pretty funny. It was just a great place to grow up. Um, uh, I attended the First Baptist Church there. That's where I joined the church. And. Uh, was baptized there by Arnold McRae. And um, uh, I attended a, 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 a kindergarten at Miss Lewis's. And I used to walk over there. Can you imagine a, a five-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old boy walking down the street, walking a, a two blocks away to go to kindergarten? And your mom and daddy letting you. Um, just unheard of. Uh, but then I went to elementary school. Boy, I had fun. I mean, I had lots of good friends. Uh, uh, we Back then, you know, when you got recess, uh, everybody grabbed bats and balls, and you went out there and you chose up sides and you played softball as long as you could until they came out there and rang that bell. Miss R to come out there and ring that bell, and you had to go back, back to class. Um, but I was telling somebody just today that I can name every teacher I had from the first grade to when I graduated from, from uh, high school. Uh, uh, you know, there's a, a, a yard full of stories I could tell you, but one of the funniest ones I like to tell is I used to sell peanuts downtown, boil peanuts, 10 cents a bag, and um, used to boil them at home. And um, I'd put them in my bicycle. I'd roll the bags up, put them in my bicycle, and take them downtown or anywhere and sell them. Well, this one summer, I was riding by the church, and I said, you know, I'm going to stop at the back door. I'm going to walk up there and see if that door is open. If it is, I'm going to go ease myself down in that baptistry because we kept water in it all the time, and I'm going to cool off. Well, shoot, I swam in that thing for a month and a half before they caught me. Uh, but... I was in it one day, and I heard the preacher coming out of his office, and I got up out of it, and he heard the water, and I ran out that back door, jumped on my bicycle, and was headed home, and he's standing at the back door. says, Joe Andrew, I, I know who you are. I recognize you. I'm listening to call your daddy. Well, he called my daddy. My daddy was uh, chairman of the board of deacons at that point in time. Daddy gets home that afternoon. He says, come on, let's go to the back. I got to talk to you. So we go to the back, and he says, I got to just ask you, and I just want you to tell me, were, did you get down in the baptistry at the First Baptist Church? I said, yes, sir. He says, Joe, what were you doing? He said, I said, I was cooling off. I was just kind of sitting in the water. The water was cool, and 
It was hot outside. I've been selling them peanuts and stuff. And he said, did you just do it that one time? I said, no, sir, I've been doing it most of the summer. Not every day, but some of the days during the week, you know, I'd get down in there. And, um, but then I didn't wear nothing, but, uh, I didn't have on any shoes. I didn't wear a shirt. I had a, a mama got me black shorts to wear because I'd stay so dirty. She didn't want me wearing other colors because they always look so bad. So she got me black shorts. I had on a pair of black shorts and I'd go swimming in that bed. Well, he asked me, he says, how long have you been doing it? I said, well, probably at least a month and a half. But not every day. He said, Joe, why in the world would you get down in the bed? I said, to cool off, Daddy. I said, now, you don't think the good Lord would begrudge me a little dip in the baptistry, do you? I said, uh, that's just a place to cool off. It's done anything then but uh, water. And he said, Joe, you're just not supposed to do that. You, uh, you got to be punished. I ain't going to whip you because it, it, you, you make a good point that, you know, it is God's water and, He'd share it with you, and I'm sure he had a good time watching you swim in that in that baptistry. He said, but you're going to have to clean it. Brother Van Grace said there's an oil ring around it, so you've been getting in there a lot. I said, well, well now, wait a minute now. What about all them people that have been baptized in there? You know, they probably left some oil behind besides me. He said, that don't matter. You're going to clean that baptistry. So my punishment was to go down there, drain the baptistry, wash it out, clean it up, make sure the inside met Arnold Mac Ray's uh, 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 standard, and then we w- w- filled it up with water again. Uh, but funny story about Geneva. Uh, in Geneva, I sold peanuts. I sold oil door to door. I did anything I could make a dime. When I was out riding around, I saw a Coke bottle. I'd pick it up, put it in my wagon, I was pulling behind my, 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 my bicycle and I'd sell that and get two cents or whatever it was and, uh, or a penny. Uh, anything I could do that would make me a little bit of money, I did. Well, my first job, I uh, used to sweep stores out in Geneva. But anyway, Mr. Watson was always so good to me and he gave me a quarter for sweeping out his store. Now let me tell you, I could take a I could take fifty cents and go to the Avon Theater on Friday, walk in theater, uh, and I could buy myself a Coca Cola and a bag of popcorn and sit there and watch Hopalong Casty and Roy Rogers movie all afternoon. Uh, till dark because I had to hurry up and get home in because I had to be home about 6.30. And um, I'd walk home. And walking home was about a mile and a half, something like that. Now, can you imagine just getting, being able in Montgomery or somewhere like that, get in, walk out of a theater and just walk home? Can't do it. Um, my first job that I had with, a, uh, with my Social Security card was for, with B.C. Moore and Son in Geneva, Alabama. Uh, my manager's name was, uh, oh, Lord, I called it once here a while ago. Uh, I'll come back. Uh, um, Delone Watson. Delone gave me that job. And the first thing I did was went back with Benny Helms, and Benny Helms taught me how to rerun ladies' shoes. And what that is is all those shoes had numbers on, and you had to line them up with the same number with the smallest size at the bottom and go up. And then you had to rerun those shoes and put them on because you only had so much space back there to store shoes. Well, from there I went over to the men's department and I learned from some of the seamstress how to measure pants and coats and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and I developed myself a nice little business doing that. And um, uh, I learned how to uh, uh, sell yarn and sell thread and uh, uh, just all kinds of things. Uh, Delon Watson taught me a lot on how to deal with people and taught me a lot about value added. People don't understand what value added means nowadays. But back then, if I sold a man a suit and a shirt, I might have given him a tie. If I sold him a shirt, a suit, a belt, 
and a pair of shoes, I probably gave him socks too. So that was value added. Um, and I'd write his name down. And uh, if something came in that I knew that he liked, I might call him on the phone and I might say, hey, so-and-so, I got that color coat over here you wanted, or I've got uh, that pair of shoes over here you wanted, that pair of boots, whatever it might be. But Delone Watson taught me a lot. <clears throat>